In this example, we're going to talk about arguably the most important density function for our context here. It is the normal probability density function. f of x is given by this equation. Notice that e here is a very important number in mathematics, is approximately equal to 2.71828. Pi is another constant in mathematics, over here. It is approximately 3.14159. Mi is whatever the assumed mean of the distribution is. And sigma, here and here, is the square root of the assumed variance of the distribution, also called a standard deviation. Okay, I know, right? Somebody came up with that. Basically, Gauss, that's also called the Gaussian distribution. So for a given x, if you want to know f of x, you have to substitute in this equation here. The normal distribution is always bell-shaped and symmetric. Let's take a look at some examples before we continue. Here's a figure I got from Wikipedia. And I like this figure also to illustrate in a more intuitive way the concepts of mean and variance. Now, mean that we defined above is a measure of central tendency. Loosely speaking, is where the data tend to be. For instance, compare the normal distribution where the average or the mean is zero in the blue one and the one where the mean is minus two which is the green one. Notice that the data has this tendency to be around the mean. How do I know that? Well, most of the data in the first distribution is around the mean. Remember, the probability is if you repeat the experiment many, many times, the frequency. So most of the data here is around zero. In the green curve, most of the data is around minus two. Now, it's also interesting to use the normal distribution to illustrate the concept of variance. Compare, for instance, the blue curve and the red curve. They all have the same mean. When you have a normal distribution, the mean is always indicated by the top of the curve. So both curves, the top of the curve is above zero. So both curves have mean equals zero. However, the variance of the red curve is larger than the variance of the blue curve. What that means is the data is more dispersed around the mean, around the central tendency. So that's what variance means is a measure of dispersion around the mean. If you look at the yellow curve where the variance is much larger, it's much more dispersed. Okay, what else can you tell about this curve? Well, it's also interesting to see the range. The range of x is from minus infinity to plus infinity, even though the extreme values are really, really, really not likely. The probability gets very, very, very small the further you are from the mean. That's different from the other examples we saw before, though. Back to the example of the clock. Here, the range of x was between 0 and 60. There is no way you're going to see the hand of the clock indicating 70 seconds. It's not going to happen, so the range is finite. On the other hand, when you are looking at the following example, x could assume values from 1 to plus infinity. So the range was from 1 to plus infinity. Now in the normal distribution, it's from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, going back to the formula, how come the mean and 
the variance or actually the standard deviation, which is the square root of the variance, how come they are in the formula? Well, because here's the thing. When they came up with this equation, they figured out that whatever number they put in here is going to be the expected value of the distribution. And whatever number they put here in here, it's going to be the standard deviation of the distribution. I included some coding in R to test that, so let's look at it. Okay, so I created this code to test what I just said. Basically, I'm going to write down this equation in R, and I'm going to choose mean equals 1. So instead of me here, I'm going to put the number 1. And I'm going to choose the standard deviation to be 2. So instead of the sigma here, I am going to put the number 2. Then I'm going to calculate the expected value of this function and the variance. The expected value has to be 1, and the variance has to be 4, which is the square of the standard deviation. Okay, so let's test that. First, let's tell R that I'm programming a function, so f equals function. The argument is x. So what is the function? 1 divided by, well, I choose the square root 2, so 2 times. In our language, the asterisk means times. We saw that before. That's the symbol for square root. 2 times pi. R know that pi is approximately 3.14. Then you're going to multiply that by e. The term for e in R is x. This x means e power something. So whatever is inside the parentheses, it is the S point of E. R has special symbols for E and pi because those are very common in mathematics. That's why you don't need to approximate by their approximate numbers. R already knows what they mean. So minus half, minus 0 0.5 times x minus 1, which is the mean I chose, divided by the square root, I chose 2, and then square. Okay. With that in mind, remember the definition of expected value, which is the integral of x times f of x. So once I define my f, I am going to define another function, g, which is just equal x times f of x, because that's the function that I want to integrate, not the original function f. I want to integrate another function, which is x times f of x. Now, the range of x is minus infinity to plus infinite, so I'm going to integrate over the whole real line. Okay? Let's test this. you can see that the result is 1. So yeah, if I choose to put 1 here and then take the expected value, the expected value would be 1. Now let's try the variance. To calculate the variance, I do not have to integrate f of x, but I have to integrate this alternative function here, which is x minus me, x minus 1, square times f of x. So let's do that, integrate this function. Again, x is varying from minus infinity to plus infinity, and let's see what I get. I got 4, which is what I expected, because I chose the standard deviation to be 2, and the variance is, therefore, 4. Therefore, as discussed, Whichever number you choose to put here is going to be the expected value, and whichever number you choose to put here is going to be the standard deviation. Next, let's talk about the importance of this distribution. It cannot be underestimated. It is twofold. First, as my first 
econometrics professor told me, nature is a perfect normal distribution. Many, many, many natural phenomena behave as predicted by the normal distribution. The model, in other words, works very, very, very well. It's very useful. Let's see an example. It is in the end of the notes. I took this from a paper that's the distribution of male height in Italy during the First World War. So here it is. The sample that he got, how did he get a sample? He just looked at the height of a bunch of men. Okay, so that's his sample and wrote it down. Is given by this curve here, raw. Okay. What is predicted by the normal distribution is these little dots here. So you can see that they are close. It works well, even if the sample is not very large. Any reality is actually intuitive. Think about it. Most people you know have average height. The frequency, which if your sample is large enough equals the predicted probability, is much higher for people of average size. Most people are average size. On the other hand, consider a very, very, very tall person. 1 meter 80 centimeters is getting close to 6 feet. Okay? How many people do you know that tall? Well, not many people. So the frequency, which again, if your sample is large enough, is the predicted probability, is much smaller. What about a very, very short person? 1 meter 40 centimeters. Again, the density or the frequency is much smaller. So basically, the closer a height is to the mean, the more people you know that have that height. That's the idea. It's called normal distribution because it's what you normally see in nature. Okay. The second reason why this distribution is so important is because of its analytical properties. Although this equation seems very hard, believe it or not, it makes our life much, much, much easier. We're going to get there. The econometric analysis we are going to perform are heavily based on this distribution. And our life is much easier because of the characteristics of this distribution. So, once we pass the shock of seeing this formula, actually you're going to see that this distribution is very friendly.